Ghostwire Tokyo is the latest game from the creators of the Evil Within franchise. If you're just starting out in this spooky world, you may find yourself a little overwhelmed by all the slender men with umbrellas and creepy headless schoolgirls. So this guide will give you some beginner's tips to help you bust these ghosts. I'm Jamie Latour, and this is a beginner's guide to Ghostwire Tokyo. Let's start with everyone's favorite part of the game, adjusting options in the menu. Yay. There are plenty of options in Ghostwire Tokyo's menu that can make your experience a whole lot better. For one thing, plenty of missions will have time limits. If you fail to complete the mission before the timer goes out, then bad stuff naturally happens. If the sound of that is already stressing you out, don't worry about it. You could just turn that off in the options. Take that time. You should also make sure to always save manually as even though this game has a pretty generous autosave option, manual saves will load you in at the exact spot that you stopped playing when you made that save. Although, keep in mind that you can't save while you're in combat, exploring a building, or in the middle of some specific mission. Speaking of exploration, this version of Tokyo has random crap hidden everywhere. There's plenty of items lying around that you can add to your inventory, such as food that can heal you in the middle of of a battle, so make sure to explore every single nook and cranny. You might even find some spooky ghost food that could give you some nice temporary buffs. Don't forget to look up sometimes as well. When you hit chapter 2, you'll be introduced to Tengus who will fly high above you. You could use these to grapple up to the top of tall buildings to find all kinds of secrets and extra goodies. Finding your way across Tokyo can be a little daunting since it's so big and filled with spooky specters, so you're going to need to rely on your map. It'll help you keep track of all of the collectibles this game wants you to find, and <laughs> there's a lot. This, this game really wants you to find a lot of stuff. As soon as you pass by a point of interest, such as a Tory gate or a special merchant, it'll be marked on your map. In addition to that, Chapter 2 will also introduce a mechanic called Spectral Vision. This is more or less your radar, or your bat vision, or that thing that Isaac would do in Dead Space, you know, that little laser beam thing, points it on the ground, shows you where to go next. Yeah, you know, that, that, that thing that like every game has now. You can use this to find your way to your next objective, uncover hidden secrets, and scan the area for items and enemies. A lot of your enemy encounters will involve shooting them in the face, well actually I don't think they have faces, shooting them in the spot where their faces should be with your assortment of magical powers. However, you can manage to get the drop on them. Sneaking up and performing a stealth attack, or quick purge as it's called here, will instantly take them out. As long as they're not a tough enemy like that lady with the scissors, you can deal with most enemies if you're careful and quiet. That being said, sneaking around Tokyo can be a rather slow way to progress through the game. Thankfully, there's an entire skill tree that can make not only stealth, but all of your abilities way more fun. Just about every single one of these upgrades is useful in some way. If you skip most of the optional content and stick to the main story missions, you'll be able to get about half of these upgrades, but completing plenty of side quests and other activities should allow you to get every single one of them in a single file. A good way to get some extra XP is to use these little Katashiro paper dolls to absorb spirits and then cash them in at nearby phone booths. Loading your entire collection of them with spirits should reward you with a ton of experience points. Finally, and this tip is likely the most important one of all, pet the damn dogs. There's a bunch of adorable dogs roaming around Tokyo and they want your attention. Give them any dog food you find while out scavenging and they'll dig up some money or consumable items in exchange. There are also cats, although they're less happy to see you. They will, however, give you tips about the game and directions to unique items, which does make them far more helpful than real cats. For more Ghostwire Tokyo news and guides, head on over to thegamer.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.